For over a decade now, the Layton series has been filling our screens with mystery upon mystery upon mystery. And not just the main ones in-game. From the illusions of False Sense to the location of Monte Dora Miss Tallery, the games leave quite a few things unanswered. But there's still one big mystery that's been debated by fans for years. What year is it, anyway? From the speculations of Victorian England with its steam and coal power, or as late as 2018 if we take the crossover with Phoenix Wright to be canon, it's hard to pinpoint a time period where everything would make sense. In the world of Professor Layton, the developers confirmed that they based the games on England in the 1960s, but ultimately they decided to remove a specific year so they weren't constrained to the actual technology of that time period. In fact, they even went as far as to make an official piece of artwork stating that Curious Village took place in 1960, which was found in the game files, unused but still super cool to see. But ending the mystery there would just be boring, and we wouldn't have a video on our hands. So instead, I thought it'd be a little bit cool to see what the earliest year the games could take place in, using just the information in the first trilogy. Because the prequels... Well, uh, we'll talk about that another day. So, without any further ado, let's crack this case! Now, throughout the Layton series, it has been confirmed as canon that the wheel has been invented, appearing several times throughout the games. It's not completely clear who invented the first wheel, though it has been credited to the Elamites, as their sculptures were the first to portray it, around 4500 BCE. And with that firmly in place, we can start moving forwards. In several games, now Layton's top hat has been stated to be made of silk, and the earliest year in which silk was used for clothing was around 3630 BC. In Lost Future, Bill Hawke states that mankind has conquered the seas, which were first explored back in approximately 3000 BC, according to some sources. The statue of Duke Herzen in the Falsens Museum shows him standing with a pickaxe, something that wasn't invented until 2700 BC, and in the Falsens Antique Shop, two umbrellas can be found in the pot by the door, umbrellas being first used in about 2450 BC. In 2400 BC, though, the first weighing scale was invented, not too dissimilar from the one in Falsens' greengrocers. In approximately 1980 BC, domestic cats were starting to make a bigger appearance, and ice skating was beginning to form as a mode of transport, just like this puzzle in Pandora's box. In 424 BC, the first magnifying glass was written about, which is very similar to the one Luke uses in Curious Village's bonus artwork. And now we've hit zero. So, after Jesus' birth and about 634 years later, the first windmill popped up in Khorasan, Iran. The Dropstones one looks a tad more advanced than the one they had then. Skip forward a few years and we get the introduction of the pound in 775. This classic currency value is featured throughout the games in many puzzles, so it was fundamental that we use it to calculate the year. Next up, in approximately 1101 AD, we have the creation of Granny Riddleton's shack, as it's obviously a TARDIS based on how a tiny shack that exists in both past Falsons and present St. Mysterie can fit a huge room and another house inside of it. Honestly, unbelievable. The 13th century then saw the invention of the croissant, one of the many things Don Paolo leaved in his dirty hotel room, as well as the first UK pub opening its doors in 1251 and the invention of eyeglasses in 1290. Later still in the 14th century, the drawbridge starts to become more common around castles and landmarks, and then the 15th century kicks it down and presents us with the printing press in 1476 and Flora's big-ass globe in 1492. And then, whoa, hold the phone! It's the 17th and 18th centuries, and they're bringing in analogue watches, the first Prime Minister, gas balloons, and the first publication of the London Times. Lobster is beginning to be eaten now, though it's not until the 19th century that it becomes a dish of the upper classes. And here it comes now, bringing in passenger railway travel, elevators, and the formation of Scotland Yard in 1807, 1823, and 1829, respectively. Next, we're looking at the birth of modern baseball in 1838, as well as the rebuilding of the Palace of Westminster that we know today, in 1840 to 1876. 1848 saw the beginning of modern football and the installation of many interior toilets in the houses of the upper middle classes, such as the one that would go on display in the Herzen Museum much later on. Then we've got a double do for 1859 as the UK's first sewer network gets installed in London and tennis is beginning to be played on our lawns. 1876 sees the telephone come into existence, then electric streetlights in 1878, then the first cabaret club in 1881, the first commercial phonograph and the completion of the Eiffel Tower in 1887, the first Ferris wheel in 1893, neon lights in 1898, 35mm film in 1905, traffic lights in 1912, the Austin 7 Ruby in 1934, color film 1935, helicopters 1939, wireless microphones 1947, Citroen's famous 2CV 1948, Austin's A30 1952, Route Master buses 1954, digital clocks 1956, Austin's FX4 1958, Bill Hawke's second 
man has been in space, 1961. A Boeing 747, 1969. This image of a random puzzle in Pandora's box where a man is holding a goddamn Glock handgun, 1986. Port Cullis House has been built, 1992. Cleaning robots, 1996. The London Eye has not been built, 2000. The villagers are sent mystery all robots with independent emotion, free will, and are controlled by cogs and wireless frequencies. Uh Ah. I'm uh, beginning to see why the developers didn't want to put in a year. Let's, uh... Let's stick to the 60s then. Soz gang. And with the year at least thought about, that right there is another puzzle solved. I guess. Just about. Hey gang, dearest Herschel here. I uh, just wanted to say properly a huge thanks for helping the channel hit 1,000 subscribers. I, uh, I started this channel to keep my childhood and the later name alive, so seeing that so many other people are up for doing that too is really just super heartwarming. I've wanted to make content like another puzzle sold for years now, and I finally feel I've got an audience where it will pay off and actually make sense. Even if he does break the laws of physics every single game. Thanks so much for all the support lately, and I'll make something new soon too. Cheers.